In the health promotion paper, um, there were some lots of very interesting information. Uh, one of the uh, thing mentioned is the, the mix of health and illness. So some of the meaning or, or part of the meaning sometimes is regarding the illness, dealing with symptom, how to treat it and so on. But um, a large part of the meaning also is about wellness, things that will make you feel better for this cancer and for health in general. And basically, if your system, your immune system is, is, is strong, you will be able to fight all kinds of disease, including cancer. So a large part of the, the, the and it's very interesting people, when, when it comes down to diet uh, or um, items about uh, your, your wellness in general, people are very interested in, in, in that part also. Specifically for the people that are on active surveillance. There's lots of information that is interesting in those meetings. Yes, there is part of the conversation discussed incontinence uh, and symptoms that you have to deal with after. Um, even this information is somewhat interesting for me because in 10 years, I might find myself in that situation. Getting an operation is could become a, the solution for me in the future if my situation evolve so on a on a monthly basis or, or, or three every three months I get my PSA tested and I make sure that uh, that uh, it remains stable so this information if my PSA suddenly start to raise unexpectedly could become very useful but even if you still act as surveillance there's a good part of the conversation that involves diet even even diet for for um, for people that um, that that have had the an operation and those that are trying to avoid the operation is very similar. Um, a large part of it is not even for people with, with this specific cancer or cancer in general. It's good advice in general uh, to stay healthy. If you stay healthy, uh, it will help just in, to prepare yourself for an operation. If you, it's much more easy to, to face an operation if you're healthy than if you're not healthy. So it's good advice in general. And this is, I think for society in general, has become much more interesting and much more discussed in the last few years. So there's a good part of, the, of those meetings that, that discuss that. Even if it's not the formal part of the meeting, there'll be conversation after the meeting. People will come and ask questions about diet and say, oh, I discovered this new thing also. And sometimes it's, 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 a, it's a red earring. It's not always good information, but it gets the conversation going. And then you can verify things with the doctor after also, because there's a doctor there. So, so even if the formal part of the meeting is not necessarily um, interesting that day for somebody on active surveillance, um, the information around and the, the information in the library and so on can be very useful also. Well, for me, the, the most interesting information that came out of those support group was around active surveillance. Information about diet, information about the fact that some certain vitamins help reduce the uh, likelihood of getting cancer or help to reduce the effect once you've got the cancer also. So when this information came out, it made, made me feel more comfortable. I didn't want to just do nothing to avoid the symptom. I wanted to make sure that I took an active role to help reduce the likelihood of this becoming a very severe situation. So this information was, was re really uh, useful. And there was quite a bit of information and presenter that came and talked to this. And be able to talk to them after the meeting also to confirm some of that information was also very useful. Um, when you read it, you always wonder, am I interpreting the information correctly? One of the statistics that came into one of the meetings was uh, your likelihood of survival if you do surgery or if you do brachytherapy or if you do nothing is exactly the same. So this was mind-boggling 